Maryland, or the Free State, is situated on the USA's eastern seaboard. It's known for the beautiful Chesapeake Bay, blue crabs, and of course the great American city of Baltimore. Welcome back to Cooking the States, a series where we cook a famous dish from a different state in every episode in an attempt to get to the bottom of the true identity of American food. Now, I had the pleasure of passing through Maryland last summer and learned that Baltimore isn't only known for blue crabs. No, no. Charm City locals have an aptitude for land animals, too. This is the pit beef sandwich. On a road trip gathering intel for this video, we stopped off at Chaps Pit Barbecue just outside Baltimore, which is conveniently located outside of a gentleman's club and across the street from an old adult video shop. Nothing gets you more hungry. In a nutshell, the Baltimore pit beef sandwich is meat and fire. It's primal stuff. Man, throw meat on fire. Man, cook meat. Man, eat meat. These massive bottom rounds of beef are tossed onto an open pit barbecue, hence the name, where they're charred, cooked to a bloody rare, then cut paper thin using a meat slicer. Along with the boeuf, the sandwich features thinly sliced onions, and you can't forget the tiger sauce, aka just a creamy horseradish sauce. All right, intel acquired. Let's make this back at the crib. This is a whole bottom round flat, as they call it. Word to the wise, if you live outside Maryland, this multi-muscle roast isn't always available in the case, so you might need to talk to your butcher about getting one custom cut for you. I know I had to do that. Right now we're just gonna clean it up a bit by trimming off the silver skin. Silver skin is tough and shrivels up when cooked, and the soft fat won't render off nicely, so it's just best to get rid of it and let the seasoning fully penetrate the meat. Most of the silver skin is gone. I'm not too worried about some of these smaller things because they're gonna just blacken up and char, which is what we want. On the other side, we just have a nice fat cap here, which again, we're gonna keep on. So now we can season her up. For barbecue, I prefer to season my meat with salt before using any rub, if using a rub at all. This just ensures that the meat is properly seasoned throughout, and no matter how flavorful your rub is, meat without salt is just not what you want to put in your mouth. This is my Baltimore barbecue rub. It's similar to the one used at Chaps Barbecue. Sprinkle that all over the beef, and my roast was about 12 pounds. I used just over half of my recipe to season the whole thing. By the way, this entire recipe is written out over on my website for those of you who prefer to read things through. Link is in the description. The cool thing about pit beef is that you don't need a smoker or any special gear to make it. In Baltimore, they have these big open pits, hence the name Baltimore Pit Beef. At home, a trusty Weber kettle grill will get the job done. Any kettle grill will do. The point is, you need to char the meat over the coals until it's basically blackened and cooked to a very, very rare temperature. I'll show you why in a bit. There's no need to worry about finesse here. Matter of fact, we're gonna break some basic rules of meat cookery. Over medium-high coals, start the beef off meat side down and grill it until it's blackened and evenly charred all over. After a few minutes, flip the boeuf and char the fat side. That is what we want, this char. But just a warning here, there will be flare-ups. In our case, flare-ups are okay because, well, you'll see in a bit. Once blackened on both sides, scoot the beef to the indirect cooking side of the grill, cover with a vented lid, and allow the beef to cook for 40 minutes. This is why I said it was okay to char the fat side to a crisp, because we're gonna cut most of it off. Using a sharp knife and being careful not to burn yourself, do that. Fun little tip here, you can use that fat trim to add some fuel to your coals if they're looking kind of low and sad. Flip the beef back over the direct heat so that the trimmed bare side is over the coals, then cook for another 5-10 to 10 minutes, again until very charred. At this point, the internal temp of the beef should be lingering somewhere between 110 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 10 degrees away from a rare temperature. That is your cue to remove the beef from the grill and set it on a cutting board to rest for at least 20 minutes. This is a big, lean piece of beef. Give it the time to take a nap so that it holds on to all of its juices. Okay, check this out. Here's our charred beef. It's not fully cooked through. Remember, it's pretty rare on the inside still. You could see the way that the muscle strands and the grain, it's called, goes, right? And it changes. Like, so right here, it'll change and start moving this way. That's because these are different muscles. And we need to make sure to cut across the grain to manually tenderize this thing because it's still kind of tough. So I just want to show you how rare this thing's going to be just by cutting it into a manageable piece. We got one muscle, right, all going this way, which means to cut across it, 
we need to come at it like this. And use a very sharp knife, cut it into it like that, to slice thin pieces, because we don't have a meat slicer. And if for some reason you do have a meat slicer at your house, uh, now's the time to boot her up. Lucky you. But a sharp long knife gets the job done just fine. Obviously, it's a little trickier, but you can get some nice thin pieces if you focus. Just remember, go as thin as you possibly can. After all, this is a bottom round and it is a tough cut. Slicing thin pieces across the grain will make it tender, otherwise it'll be quite chewy. This, for me, is perfect. But if it's too rare for you, you can throw it back on the grill. Give it a little extra smoke. Remember, we didn't season the inside of this. A little pinch of salt goes a long way. All right, beef skis complete skis. Let's get back inside and put this thing together. We need two things here. One is onion, thinly sliced onion. I'm using a mandolin to slice perfect little slivers, but again, a knife works too. Second is the tiger sauce, AKA horseradish sauce, creamy horseradish sauce, which begins with a base of mayonnaise, some lemon juice, cloves of garlic, salt, black pepper, and the god particle, AKA MSG. No, this is not an adult toy. This is fresh horseradish root. If you're used to prepared horseradish that comes in those little jars, this is the fresh version. It's a little stronger, and if you have it available at your grocery store, then buy some. You won't regret it, it's super strong. And we like strong. Fresh horseradish is simple to work with. All you gotta do is peel it like you would a carrot, then grate it on a microplane or the small side of a box grater like you would hard cheese. As always, taste and adjust seasoning to fit your own personal taste. For a less potent tiger sauce, if you're into that, use less horseradish. Oh yeah, this sauce should be chunky with horseradish. If you want it to be strong, lots of garlic, lots of horseradish. After all, it is called tiger sauce. It should have a bite. Let's talk bread. This is a Kaiser roll. You can either use a burger bun, you can buy a Kaiser roll, use any bun you'd like. If you want the recipe for this, it's gonna be over on my website with the, the rest of this stuff. Our wonderful beef. We're just gonna stack that nice and tall. Get some nice rare pieces on there. We're making these at home. We can load them up however we want. To build this boyo, slop some tiger sauce right over the meat. No need to be neat here. And remember, more is more. Finish with razor thin onions and that's literally all you do. This is straight up, no BS, no frills food. Much like the hardworking peeps who make up the city of Baltimore. Whew, look at that. I'm going for that drip. Mm-hmm. That's scary good. Like scarier than Omar. If you consider yourself a purist, this sandwich is definitely for you. Is it a roast beef sandwich? Is it a French dip? Sort of, kind of, not really. The char from the grill and those that beautiful time spent over the fire gives this sandwich a unique angle that I think really does set it apart and make it special. You can just see right there, the char marks worked into the tiger sauce. Honestly, that is pretty chaps-like, but shout out to Boogs too. Supposedly they do an amazing pit beef over at the Orioles Stadium. I didn't get there, but I will be there next time. Next episode, we're staying here in New England and going over to Massachusetts. Can you mask guys and gals guess what we're gonna make? Comment below if you think you know. All right, all the stuff, you know the drill. Like the video, it does help the channel a lot. Sub to the channel if you're new here, welcome. Also guys, aprons for sale on the website. And if you wanna join Omnivore HQ, we got a Discord going, we're doing special giveaways, newsletters, all that fun stuff. All those good links are below. Uh, that's pretty much all I got for you, so see you next time. Toodle. Ooh. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.